Come on and sing it. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you love me when I call. Is it true, Lord? Come on. Is it true that you are thinking of me? That you love me? It's amazing. Come on, who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of? It's amazing. Come on, sing it. It's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am a friend of God. Oh, yeah. I am a friend of God. Oh, Lord. I am a friend of God. He called me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Yeah. I am a friend of God. He to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Come on, lift up a shout to the Lord. Yes, we bless you, Father. You're glorious in your house tonight, Father. Oh, we worship you, Father. We come to give you all the glory and all the honor. And we thank you, Lord, that you call us friends. Hallelujah. Come on, who am I? Who am I that you are mindful? When I call, come on, sing it. Is it true that you love me? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? Come on, sing it. It's amazing. It's amazing. One more time. Come on. It's amazing. Someone say, I'm a friend. Come on. Friend. We can't sing a song like that, Lewis, without being friendly. So everybody smile at each other. Amen. Come on. That's right. Show your nice 32. Amen. Some 22. You know, it's all good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing another song, but I do want you to go greet some people, love on some people. It's just that kind of a night. Amen. Just go call people blessed and highly favored and flavored of the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's sing another song and let's bless the name of the Lord. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Yeah, I 
woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus. Hey, I woke up this morning with my mind set on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on again. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind set Like this, you just get the hanky, you just start waving it everywhere, you know? 
You start made to make your, your, your hand the, the hanking. You just wave that, that banner of victory. Let me see that hand. Come on. Just say, I got the victory. Amen. Come on. Because my mind is set on Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray you wake up every morning. You just say, my mind is set on him. Amen. What you going to do? You, you're doing this to the devil. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all ever play that? Before? No, y'all are too holy, right? Yeah, y'all never played that kind of, you know. Well, that's what we do with that devil. We just say, I, my mind is set on Jesus. Pap, take that devil. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, God is great. Amen. And he greatly to be praised. I asked uh, Brother Freddie and Sister Lolly, y'all have a seat. I asked them to come share. God has done some tremendous things in, in, in their life and in their ministry and in their body. And, and just giving God all the praise and all the glory. Come on, give them a great hand clap. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Cher. Hallelujah. That hand clap is for Jesus Christ. It's not for man. Uh, I, I had uh, asked Pastor to, I wanted to, we wanted to give a testimony for the month of May, Miracle May. Over 200 souls came to the Lord at that prison. And you know, thank you, Jesus, because it's all in his honor and his glory. And when we were called five years ago, I could count in my hands people that had come to the Lord with us in my hand. Now, ya no tengo dedos. Thousands have come to the Lord. Thousands have reconciled with the Lord. And when you're called, if you've been called, answer. You answer your phone. You answer your text. You answer, you know, you, you, you answer everything. How come you don't answer Jesus when he calls? Because again, uh, John 15, 16 says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And, and, and that's why you're here today. That's why we are all here today, because we were chosen. Pastor didn't choose us. Brother Linares, Ms. Linares didn't choose us. He chose us. That's what the Word of God says. That's what the Word of God says. So we, we've been chosen. We're chosen people. We were, uh, we were chosen, what, 6,000 years ago, Pastor? Is, we were chosen. Uh, amen. So... In, if in your spirit you know you've been called, answer. Answer. We didn't want to answer. We didn't want to go to the prison. We didn't want to do it, honestly. But you know, we've been blessed by answering the call. I mean, we've had to pay a price. Jesus paid a price for me and for you. He answered his calling over 2,000 years ago. And... He paid a price. And when you answer your calling, we've answered. We've had to pay a price. But you know what? To know that we're working for the kingdom. The word of God says, seek the kingdom first. And then he says, everything else will be added on, Pastor. Everything else. Everything. But a lot of us, we are reversed. We want everything first carro nuevo casa nueva uh un raise at work and all of that but let's do it let's do it the right way if we say we're christians let's do what let's do what jesus would do he answered his calling let's answer ours amen hermanos Hallelujah. dios me los bendiga i don't know if my wife Hallelujah. Wants here just hold on one moment one moment there's just an anointing right there let's give that mic back to brother freddie right now we're going to have Lolly speak here in just a few moments. There's an anointing in this house. Hallelujah. Many are called, but yet few are chosen. Amen. Well, Pastor, how do I know I'm, I'm one of those chosen ones? Well, well, just by faith, just grab the calling of God. Amen. Amen. And God will bring peace to you. So, Brother Freddie, pray right now as we're all lifting our hands right now. <laughs> pray right now and, and, and just speak the blessing over, over the congregation in the name of Jesus. For those that are called. Heaven, Hallelujah. Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. First of all, Father, we come before you with a humbled heart. Yes. We come before you, Father, because we have we have failed you today. We have sinned against you today. But we come before you, Father, asking you for that mercy. For forgiveness. That forgiveness, Father. For that 
that love that you showed at that cross, Father. That agape love. Thank you, Father. And Father, Holy Spirit, do what you need to do today, at this moment, yes. in each and every one that is here today. We receive. Do what you got to do, Holy Spirit. Me and my wife, we step aside and do what you got to do. If it's save, save. If it's healing, heal. If it's restore, restore. Yes. Father, we leave it up to you, Father. And whoever, Father, you have chosen today, I ask you, Father, that in their hearts, you bring that peace yes. that comes from above, white as snow. And Father, I know, I know and I know, Father, that your children will answer their calling. Hallelujah. And Father, today, Father, you receive honor and glory yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And the church said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How do I know, Pastor? Well, you do know. Say, I know. I know. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, he goes, I know that I have plans for you. Come on. Amen. amen. Plans of hope, plans of blessings. Come on. Just receive it right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. How else will I know, Pastor? Well, what, what, what if it was the enchiladas I ate today? No, 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 no. John, 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 John 10, 4 says, we know the voice. Come on. We know the voice of the good shepherd. And that's the voice we follow. Hallelujah. We also know the voice of the thief. Come on. But that's the voice of the stranger. That's the voice we do not follow. Come on. So we know those voices. But I declare today, raise your hands right now. I declare today we hear the voice of the good and great shepherd in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lolly, please share. And my God did miracles when Evangelist Phil, he'd already been working and doing miracles. And, 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 and she's going to share a little bit. I just want to take her freedom. Praise her. We, we family. Someone say we're family. Hallelujah. And God has been doing a tremendous work in her. And uh, when Evangelist Philip Baker was here, just a, a lot of confirmations took place. And God began to work even more. And God worked speedily. Come on. When Isaiah 58, 8 says we can declare a speedy recover. Come on, somebody. That's what we declare. So share, Lolly. Give us hope. Yes. I, I, I want to thank God today because um, I had told Pastor Kim and Pastor Mark uh, about two weeks or a week ago, I don't know, uh, that I was going to be going back to the doctor and, and getting the, some reports from some tests that they have been doing on me. And I thank God because, um, let me see, I, on this month, I think I missed two Sundays, right, that I had to stay home. Freddie had to go to the prison by himself for two Sundays. I wasn't able to go. And, and, but I didn't stay to go to sleep. I stayed and I, I kept interceding for him the whole time that he was over there by himself. Because I know that this is our ministry that God has blessed us with. And, and you know, um, this Sunday, uh, we had 18 people. And out of the 18, we had 16 that got saved. But... Uh, you know, what I want to share with you is that doctors, doctors are put here for, for them to do their job. We don't put our trust in the doctors. We put our trust in God. And that's what I did. Um, in one of the tests that, I, that the doctors did on me, when I got to the room, um, I couldn't breathe. My heart was, was beating so fast that the doctor asked me, are you okay? And I said, I don't know what's wrong with me, but ever since, and I'm not going to go into details because it's very personal, but, you know, I said, ever since this started to happen to me, this is what I've noticed that I can't breathe. Well, um, she checked my, my pressure and my pressure was pretty high. And um, she said, you know, when you leave from here, I need you to stop in Pearsall and go to the ER because you need blood. You know, your heart is not getting enough blood. And I said, I said, I, I didn't tell her I wasn't going to stop. I said, when, when we got into our vehicle, you know, 
I didn't even say anything to Freddie until, you know, I was praying and I said, Lord, I've gotten blood before. I've gotten a lot of blood before and it scares me. But every time I get blood, I, of course, I always pray. But I said, Lord, I'm going to put my total trust in you that you are going to, to, to do the miracle. You're going to replace that blood that my heart is needing, that is lacking. You're going to do it. So when, pa when Brother Philip, Pastor Philip Baker was here, you know, uh, when Pastor Mark texted us and said, are you guys going to be coming? I told Freddie, um, I'm too tired. I'm, I'm tired. I'm not going to make it all day. So we'll go half a day. But our plans are not God's plans, and our ways are not God's ways. And so when we were here... Hold on, Lolly, right there. There's an anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our plans are not God's plans. The Bible says His ways are higher than... Amen. Some of you missed an opportunity. Yes. Come on, Pastor. Come on. You missed it. I have my eyes closed because I don't, listen, my eyes are as fire right now. They're very sharp, but I'm seeing in the spirit. And maybe you have felt in your walk right now, in some way, you missed it. Woo. Lift your hands, everyone, everyone, lift your hands. There's an anointing in this house right now, the Holy Spirit. You see, it takes faith to move a mountain. It's very easy to talk to it. It's very easy to complain about it. It's very easy to walk around it. But when you have to utilize your faith to get it out of the way, don't lose your opportunity. Hallelujah. Now let that anointing just sink in right now. Just let it sink in. Okay, Lolly, you can continue right now. Hallelujah. And I thank God that I didn't listen. I didn't listen to the voice of the enemy, you know. And when we were here, uh, Brother Philip started to say, he started to really hit, mm. you know, the heart. He really started to. And um, so I had been feeling really lonely and I had a lot of fear because Satan was mm. telling me that I was gonna that I was just gonna pass out mm. that I was gonna that that I was not gonna be here for much longer mm. and when I heard that voice right away I said I rebuke you in Jesus name I said I bind you and I rebuke you in Jesus name mm. and when I said those words mm. you know um, we went home and then you know I, I, I told Pastor Kim I said I'm gonna go home for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and so I mean I was anxious I was in a hurry to get back because I needed to be here. Mm. When I had told Pastor Mark that we were only mm. gonna be here for half a day, I said, Freddie, I don't know what's going on, but we mm. have to go back. And when we came back, mm. you know, I felt when I walked in, I didn't say anything, but I felt a refreshment. Mm. I mean, I felt refreshed. Mm. And then when I was sitting over there, mm. and only I knew what I was feeling, what I was going through this whole time. Only Freddie, Freddie and my kids knew. And, and Pastor Mark and, and Pastor Kim knew a little bit, but my, my kids and my husband were the only ones that knew what I was really going through. I had to step down from singing because one of the times that I was up there, I felt like I was just gonna collapse and not wake up anymore. So, you know, I stepped down and I, and I felt, you know, that I just needed to be here. I mean, where the, in the congregation and just to receive. Mm. But when Pastor Philip continued and then 
I mean, I'm not gonna say everything because I, I won't finish. But on, on, on Miracle, that, that, yeah, but the second service, it was the second service that we had when Pastor was, when, yeah, the Miracle Rally, and Brother was gonna pray for all the, the, the sick people. And uh, Pastor just started to mention everything, but he didn't mention what I was going through. But God said, you know what? This is your day. This is your day. And, and because of your obedient, you're going to see what I'm going to do. And when I was on that chair right there and I had my hands up, I began to feel just blood going through my veins. But it wasn't when, like when I would get blood in the, in the hospital. This was blood that was, it felt pure when it was running through my veins, I started to feel like just, it, it was just different. I can't explain to you how it felt because it felt pure. And like this, the tiredness that I felt in my body, it went away. My neck, it stopped hurting. My head stopped hurting. My pelvic, I, I couldn't stand to be standing up or walk only I knew what I was going through but that day God healed me God healed me and when I went when I went you know um yesterday no right was it yesterday when I went to the doc Thursday when I went to the doctor she had my reports and they did another test on me and they got the reports there too and she said well your blood count is normal. Amen. Amen. Your blood count Amen. is normal. And, and, you know, and, and I just let her finish and she said, and you know what, there's no cancer. There's no cancer. And, and uh, you, you look pretty healthy, you, you look healthy. And, and, and I, I mean, what was happening to you, even though you were going through what you were going through, but your, your blood count is normal and e everything is fine mm. everything is fine you have nothing to worry you'll be able to have what it you know that uh, test that you need that surgery that you need you'll be able to have it and you're gonna be fine mm. and I said thank you Jesus mm. thank you Jesus and she said yeah yeah so you know I just thank God that I was obedient to his voice there when he is. said you need to come there back. You right need there. to stay. Obedience. Because this is this is the day that you are going mm. to get healed. And this has been happening to me for years. This is not the first time. Hallelujah. But this this year it started to get worse. But you know what? I thank God for the ministry that he gave my husband and I because we have seen people I mean we have heard stories we have heard you know um, healing we we've we've seen uh, ladies get healed from uh, tumors in that place they leave from there and they're healed they come in drinking medication the medication doesn't do anything and they leave from there with no Power medication in the blood. Come on. and healed and I thank God Power I in thank the blood. God because you know, I was obedient to God, to his voice. That's it. So, and God's no respect of persons, Lolly. Amen. He no respect. To, he, if he lets you see all of that, you think you're going to let his children just sit back and everyone else enjoy the blessing? Absolutely not. He's going to say, because I let you see it and be a part of that, you're going to receive it even more. Come Amen. on. But, Hallelujah. And, but you know what? Mm. Mm. I had a lot of people, I had females and males mm -hmm. in that place fasting and praying for God to heal me. Amen. And I'm so grateful mm. because I don't even know them. I don't know them. And you had the family of God praying for you too? Yes. You had the family of God. Come on, let's give the Lord a great hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, there's a healing power in this church already. There's a portal of faith in this church. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't know how y'all still sitting down right there. My goodness. Hallelujah. I don't know how y'all still sitting down. 
Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. There's an anointing in this house right now. Listen, listen. What does testimonies do? It opens up the door. It opens up the door so that we can, listen, listen. The woman that went to that, that tomb, she looked inside that tomb so that, not so that she could see an empty tomb, not so that she could see folded clothes. She looked in that tomb because she needed a testimony. Come on, somebody. She needed to share the good news of the gospel that Jesus is alive. So, you know, our testimony, our blessing unto him is telling the world he lives. Hallelujah. Come on. And if he lives, Lois, we can face tomorrow. Come to this altar right now. There's a healing manifestation in this altar right now. Come to this altar. You need, you need something from the Lord. Come by faith. Just come by faith. And the Lord, just as Lolly did not disobey, she seized the opportunity. Don't lose your moment. Don't let it go. Don't let shyness, don't let your thought of, well, what they're going to think of. Mm. Well, maybe this ain't my... Mm. No, no, no. Don't lose the opportunity. You pray in the Holy Ghost, pray right now. Praise pray in the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, just ask the Lord. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And then begin to speak. You're watching all around the world and you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're standing right now where you are. Be filled by the Holy Spirit right now. Jude says, we pray in the Holy Ghost. We strengthen our inner faith. Paul said, I pray more than anybody in the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And there is a language in this nation, this nation, and it's the Holy Ghost. A nation under God. Holy Spirit, you are with us. Holy Spirit, you guide us. Holy Spirit, you fill us. To overflow in the name of Jesus. Let's sing. I saw the Lord bless seated on his throne. He was close.
Sing the name of Jesus. Your name, your name is your name is Jesus. Your name is Come on, it's going out like waves. Going out like waves.
Don't get out, don't get out. Don't get out. I know they're pulling you. I know. Don't get out. of healings just just take place right now.
some people. Slowly work your way back to your chair. Very slowly. Very slowly. Because praise hallelujah anointed and appointed what a blessing what a blessing i'm going to invite them to have their chairs there in our congregation for those that are viewing around the world miss kim and tiffany and uh, young caleb y'all are there at the baptist there we just love you and we know you're watching and uh, we just want you to know that tiffany the whole church we got eloy covered he's good and uh, he'll be there tomorrow and uh, we're praying for you and we're believing God for just continuing uh, miracles, signs, and wonders to take place in your life, baby Evan, and, um, and what God is going to do all around the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Another hand clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, what a powerful, powerful, anointed time of just loving Jesus. You know, our goal tonight isn't for us to go home and just say, man, that was good. 
That's not my goal. My goal is not to go home and sit on my brown couch and say, whew, have some good church. That's not my goal. You know what my goal is? My goal is that I would hear God from heaven say, whew, that was some good church. <laughs> Come on. He inhabits the love, the praise, the honor of his people. He's in the midst of us when we are giving him honor and glory with a pure heart. We've been talking throughout Sunday and our radio program on the book Malachi. Someone say Malachi. Who can tell me who Malachi is? Who, who is he? He's a messenger. He is an angel of God. And we've been doing this study already and, and it's been a privilege to open up this book because these were God's final words. Do you all have 10 minutes to hear the word? Amen. Amen. You know, we'll never have a worship service without the word. You know, I was in a, a, a service one day, mom, we actually drove a long way to be in this service. I mean, a long way. You're talking about 600 miles. And we drove. A group of us intern ministers. And we, we were a part of a ministry team. And we drove this distance to, to be a part of this service, this, this, this a conference. And when we get there, it's going to be there one day. It was a three-day conference. We were just there one day. And we got there. We're excited. Bibles in hands. You know, we didn't have iPads back then. Not even cell phones back then. <laughs> we had a pad and a pencil or a pen, you know, and those never let you down, praise the Lord. You know, you don't got to recharge a paper, hallelujah. Just, just, just use it up and down, praise the Lord. And so we went, I mean, just excited as just ministers of, of the faith and just ready to receive it. And, you know, we began with praise and it continued with prayer. And, I mean, just powerful waves of just glory. Wow, wow, wow. And then the worship kicked in. And, wow, the worship was, I mean, just just anointed. And then, you know, I, I, you know just, just after that, and then it just kind of ended. And um, I was like, wait a minute. What's, what's, what's going on here? I mean, the worship with people slain in the Spirit, moves of the Holy Spirit, people praying for each other. I mean, it was beautiful. The acts of God. And as I was driving home, I asked the Holy Spirit. You know, He talks to us, right? Amen. He shows us the truth. He says, I said, Lord, what? all these miles? I mean... Don't get me wrong. I love to worship. I'm a worshiper. This church is a worshiping church. Living faith family. We're a worshiping church. But you know what the Holy Spirit said? I sent you that far so you can learn never to do that. Because worship, listen worshipers. Worship is the plow. It's not the seed. It's just the shovel. What good is opening the ground if you're not going to have no seed? Huh? Now I'm going to grow. So, God marries them together. Worship and the word. Come on. Worship in plows. Plows. There has to be seed. So you got ten, nine minutes now? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Malachi we've learned that he's a messenger of God the, this was God's final word to his children God's final I hit home didn't I hit home Sandra with you and, and Ruby if your children were fixing a leaf for a very long time and you were not going to see them I mean ever probably what would be the last thing you would want them to know or that came out of your heart. Well, she just said, I love you. Absolutely. God had his final words with his children. You know what they were? Honor me. 
reverence me. Give to me. Those were his last words. He spoke to sons. He spoke to servants. And he spoke to service from the priests. Someone say sons. Servants. servants. And our service. This was God's last word for over 400 plus years from the close of Malachi to the opening of Matthew. The next prophet that was alive after 400 years was John the Baptist. And he was the forerunner. He was the one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Come on, somebody. You see, there's people that just say Christ is just another prophet. He is not just another prophet. He is the Messiah. Did you know in the Old Covenant, they were talking about the Messiah is in Genesis all the way through Revelation. In the Old Covenant, they were talking about the Messiah's coming. The Messiah's coming. And the prophets and the priests and all the voices that God allowed to speak were the ones speaking and getting the people ready for who? I remember the first day I was in a church. And I mean, they preached, this pastor preached the message of salvation. That Christ is coming back. How many of you heard a message that Christ is coming back? Huh? Anybody? Christ is coming back. He can come back. He will come back tonight at midnight. Are you ready? I wasn't ready. I hadn't kissed a girl yet. I wasn't ready. <laughs> come on. I told God, I said, God, I was young then. I was probably six or seven years old, you know. I said, I had to take care of that on my checklist. I, I hadn't gotten a job to buy me a car or, or, or anything I wanted. So I had to get that off. So I wasn't ready. I said, God, I'm not ready. But I wasn't even ready spiritually. And that night, I asked God to come into my heart. I asked him to forgive me of my sin. I gave him all of that junk. And yuck that was in my life. And I said, Lord, I don't know what, what to do right now. But what I have, I give it to you. I say yes to you. I admit you're my Lord. And I wholeheartedly gave my life to Christ. Because I thought he was coming back at midnight. Come on. The next service, the preacher preached the same thing. So what do you think I did at midnight? I prayed the prayer of salvation again. And then the following day, the preacher preached the same message. I was like, wait a minute. Do we got to get saved 13 times? You said he was coming back last night. He ain't come back. The preaching of the coming of the Messiah has been all the way through Genesis to Revelation. The Bible says no one knows the day. No one knows the hour. He'll come like a thief in the night. Come on, somebody. When we're not expecting it. And that's why he leaves these final words to the children of Israel, to his adopted children, you and me. He leaves these words so we can hear it, so we can apply it, so we can live it. One of the first things he says to his children, he says, I have loved you, verse 2. I've loved you. What is he saying to, to us? He has unconditional love for you and for me. Now let's take a break real quick. Because I've heard this so many times and I've had to help people. Well, I'm not perfect. God's love covers me. Don't slap God in the face with that kind of love talk. Well, you know, who's perfect? I mean, nobody, but his love will cover me. You know what we do every time we do that? We're slapping God in the face. God loves you unconditionally. He wants you to be saved and in heaven with him. 
The Bible says he sent his only what? Begotten son. He sent the best so that he would die for you and me so that we would accept him and enter into eternal glory. But just because God sent his son did not promise you or me salvation. What do you mean, pastor? Well, I have to choose to be saved. I have to choose to believe Christ died for me. I have to choose to believe. You see, it's a walk of faith. And when I walk by faith and not by sight, it's a whole new ball game. God begins to open up things that, whoo, I didn't know were there. So God opens up a whole new realm of revelation and rhema for me. So he loves me unconditionally, but his love has conditions. What do you mean, Pastor? I thought he loved me unconditionally. I'm getting a different view about God. His love has conditions. Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24 says, if you ask in faith, then I'll give you. So what happens if we don't ask in faith? You're not going to get nothing. Come on. So that sounds like a condition, right? A condition of his love is that he wants us to have, but we have to ask in what? Faith. Faith isn't what something you see. It's substance. It's the evidence of things hoped for. So there's conditions that I have to. The, the children of Israel in, in Isaiah 58, you can read it for yourself. They prayed, they fasted, they gave offerings, they did all they knew to do, but yet God did not receive any of that. Why? Their heart wasn't in it. They did it out of ritual, out of obligation. They were told to do it. But if... if uh, you know, I, I was I was at the at the hospital and I was talking to uh, uh, my brother-in-law who was there visiting his wife and he has two sons, Timmy and Tommy, who are twins. And uh, I asked Tommy, I said, "How are you doing?" He goes, well, "I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I got up this morning and I mowed the grass." And I said, "Well, praise God. He's you know 18 years old." I said, "Praise God. Something you did on your own, right? It makes you feel good." He goes, "Actually, my dad told me to do it." Do you think he did it out of his pure heart? No. And then I asked him, did you weed it? I got to do that too. I looked at the daddy and I said, well, when you cut the grass, you just don't cut the grass. You got to edge. You got to clean up. You got to pick up the papers. You got you to cut the grass. That's what cut the grass means. Not just cut the grass. See, we can do things out of rule and out of ritual, out of obligation. You know what God says? That smells ugly. Malachi, I'm going to tell you right now, this whole Malachi, it's a different rating. It's not PG. It's not milk. Because, you know, they came prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet after word of the Lord after word of the Lord. And the children of Israel were playing ping pong with God. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He blesses me. He blesses me not. He helps me. He helps me not. He provides for me. He provides for me not. Come on. They were ping ponging with God to the point where... God knew that this is going to change. And I'm going to have to speak and tell them. And if they don't change, it's not going to be pretty. So God puts them on their lap, his lap, and says, I have loved you. But you say, in what way have you loved me? Because see, in their state of life, the economy was going bad. They were broke. Their political realm was bad. I mean, they didn't know who to worship. They were marrying out of, uh, uh, with, with, with women, with pagan gods. They were bringing other religions into their own life. And they were, they were um, 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 what's the word, uh, 
compromising their belief about Almighty God. So they were marrying wrong and they were giving wrong. I want us to read here in verse 6. It's going to be on the screen. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. And I'm going to close with this. We're going to continue this on Sunday. He says in verse 6, a son honors his father. So now who God is referring himself as? A what? Father. He says, a son honors his father. A servant honors his master. If, them, if I am your father, where is my honor? Why is God talking like that to us, to the children of Israel? Because they just slapped him on the face. Because he said, I've loved you. No, you don't. Because my marriage failed. I love you. No, you don't. I went to church and asked God to pay my light bill, and it didn't get paid. No, you don't. You didn't help me. When, 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 when my loved one or, 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 or this person was dying, I, you say you love me, but I don't see it. Love isn't something you see. Love is something you know. Love is an action. Love allows you to sense and feel the love of God. He says, where is my honor? And if I am your master, then where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. That's what God is saying. He says to you, priests... Those who have called, those who have a ministry, those who speak into people's lives, those to help other people. He says, uh, you despise my name. What? And yet you say, and what and how have I despised your name? You offer defiled food at my altar, but say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying, the table of the Lord is contemptible, meaning not worthy. And when you offer the blind and a sacrifice, isn't that evil? And when you offer the lame, the sick, isn't that evil? Offer the lame, offer the blind to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you and give you favor, says the Lord? What is God saying here? He's speaking to sons. He's speaking to servants. He's speaking to service. He's speaking to sons, which means he's speaking to us with our words. Did you know that your words identify who you are? Come on. We identify as being a Christian by our words. I can't be a Christian if I'm going to be saying negative things, complaining here, or do because that doesn't please the heart of the Father. I can't be a Christian and, 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 and do and say exactly what the world, which I'm, not a, I'm in it, but not a part of it. I can't. I can't be married to that and consider myself Christ-like Christian. Son... He says, where is my honor? Did you know that when we speak and honor God, we are identified as a son? Come on, somebody. What is the definition for honor? Highest respect, esteem. Those are your words. Ask yourself the question on a day-to-day -day basis. Am I giving my highest respect, my highest esteem? To God by what comes out of my mouth. Remember, death and life come out of the power of the tongue. James says it's very strong that it's it's untamable. We're identified by our words. That's because we're sons. Number two, we're servants. What's a servant? Well, we are to give what? Reverence. Definitions of reverence is deep respect. Honor was highest respect. Reverence is now deep 
respect, deep esteem. What is my service? That is why action, what I do for the Lord. Come on. What I do for the Lord. That is my definition. When they look up my name in the, in the Lamb's Book of Life, they're going to say, Marco Enrique Ayala de los Tablas Linares. <laughs> de Leon Martinez. Hallelujah. Yes. He is a part of the family. He's a son. We can identify with him. Okay, now my name's there. Now my description. Uh-oh. You know how you find a name on the dictionary and it has a description and it tells you what that, that word means. Okay, okay. Mar servant, yes. Okay, giving reverence to God. Yes, okay. And then begins to define who our actions defines us. And now as a, as a service unto God, we are to give him our greatest offering. Our greatest offering. I brought a show and tell because I wanted us to see this. And this is no promotion for Golden Chick. Everyone knows what this is? You're wrong. It's my chicken leg, Danny. We are to give God our highest offering, our service, time, treasure, and our talents. You know what we do when we're given what we have? Yeah, I got to pay this. It's important I pay my mortgage. Yeah, my car note's due the 15th. <laughs> I got to eat. I got to go out to eat. <clears throat> I got to have cable, direct TV. Enjoy all my pleasures of life. Oh, it's Sunday. Let me clean myself off. Oh, it's offering time. Here you go, God. We give God our leftovers. Because it's not, it's not, um, you know, I mean, well, I mean, the pastor doesn't really preach about it, so, uh, I mean, you know. But the Bible teaches it. Well, I really haven't seen it. Well, let's have a meeting. I'll show you. And then we have a concept. God come running to this chicken bone. Oh, so glad you gave me something. Look, there's still a little bit of meat on it. Do you think God wants our leftovers? You know what he says? He says... Would you give this to the president of the United States if he was coming to your house for dinner? He said, you wouldn't. Why do you give me this? He says, you get all dolled up. You get all dressed up for this moment of life. But yet when it comes to my reverence, where is your comb? 
Where's your cologne? Where? Oh, pastor, just come just as you are. If you're a baby Christian, if you're just knowing God, you come just as you are. But then God cleans you up. God gives you stuff. He, he helps you with some stuff. And then that little leftover says, you know what, God? Because if I give God leftovers, that's all I'm going to ever receive. It's a bunch of leftovers. I don't want to receive leftovers. I want the best of the Lord. And in order for me to receive the best of the Lord, then he says, remember he said, he said this to the priest. He says, you, you, you have despised my name. Yet you're saying, what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food at my altar. But you say, what kind of defiled food have we offered you? He says, you bring me the lame. You bring me the blind. You bring me the broken. Talking about animals. The priests were saying, man, that's a good looking lamb. Let's keep him for me. He's strong. We're going to need him later. But that little one that keeps on bumping into to, to other lambs, he's clumsy. He's not worth anything. Let's give what's not worth anything to God. That's what God was saying. Why would you do that? God is a God of order, right? And he has strict conditions. Because God accepts and God also rejects. What do you mean, Pastor? Cain and Abel. What did Cain do? He gathered all his vegetables as if God was some vegetarian. He tilled the land. He got the best of the best. Some say, well, man, God, that's pretty cruel. He worked so hard to get you his best. That was not the point. The point is God didn't ask for vegetables. He asked for meat. He asked for blood. And Abel came with a perfect lamb. And he said, I'm going to accept Abel's, but I'm going to reject Cain's. So, as a son, our words identify us. As a servant, our reverence to God, our action is our definition of how great God is in our lives. And in our services, as a congregation, as a believer, as a family of God, our offering... Is to be the best. Amen? Amen. It's to be the best. Amen. Now some will say, there he goes again. He yelling at us because of the offering. Listen. We need to change our mindset because we're never going to get out of those ruts if we don't change our mindset about the power of the gift to God. And I speak to the heart of this matter because many ministers have been falsely accused by preaching on the offering, on the reverence, on the honor of God. Most times those who talk are the ones that are always asking for something. But the ones that trust and honor the Lord and do as the Lord has for them are the one that God sees and says, they have my heart and they're giving. So I don't want you to say or think or hear, well, oh, man, pastor's talking my best, my best, my best, as if it is to your best right now might be $100, might be $1,000, $10,000. That might be your best. Is that what is required of me right now? Remember the woman with the little mites? Everyone else was giving thousands. They were going to the offering, showing it to their friends. 
So unto the usher and, and Jesus himself sat down and they showed it to Jesus. But the woman with the two little pennies came with all her heart because that was her best. What does that mean, pastor? That means that this lady didn't have a thousand dollars stored up somewhere. She had nothing but those two little pennies. And she said, Lord, I trust you and I'm going to bless you with what I have. You see, those thousand givers, they had tens of thousands. That little thousand they sold wasn't even their tithe. It was just chump change for them. So were they giving out of their heart? Absolutely not. They were giving out so that those can see what they give. But that woman that just gave those two little pennies, God said she gave greater than all of them put together because God sees our heart. And so if, if, if we have a storehouse and if we are not properly sowing what the storehouse is. Oh, but pastor, God, God, God will accept my gift. Will he? The Bible says he won't. In Malachi 3, we're not even there yet. That's in a couple of services. He's trying to get it straight right now with his sons, his servants, and their service. He's trying to get it straight right now with his love so that everything else can flow. And so tonight when we had church, that's the question. We leave here. I'm a son because my words are going to identify who my father is. When I leave here, my reverence to God is going to identify with my actions. I want to do for God. I want to help people. I want to do my best to serve Him. My actions. And when I come in just a few moments and lay my gift, my offering to God. I want to leave here knowing that He says, that was good. Come on. That was good. I accept it. So I want you to hold your offering in your hand. Because it's holy. If you didn't come prepared to give, ask your neighbor, give me something. I'm bold because, listen guys. God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we reap. And there's a divine principle called seed time and harvest it's a law that God has for us and when we sow God sees the seed and now we can claim the harvest in the name of Jesus so father you see this gift and it comes from our hearts you pray right now because I can only pray for myself with my seed. Father, you pray right now. This is my seed in my heart to you. This is my love to you. This is, this is because I'm your son. This is because I reverence you and I sow and I, and I serve you. This is because my services as, as, as a man chosen to follow you, Lord. I give you my best because I love you. Because you love me. Because you saved me and set me free. So here I am tonight with an open heart, releasing my best in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. And you just continue to pray amen and, and, and sow your gift in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessings. Blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Messiah. Hallelujah.
church just stretch your hands father we know that we have have given lord as as you have instructed us father from our hearts to your house lord we know that this aroma pleases you as we have sown in jesus mighty name and everyone said amen someone say i call the seed blessed say i speak harvest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I got a few text messages of those that are watching. God bless you. And uh, see you Sunday. Come to church. Hallelujah. Amen. It's great to watch online, but it's also great to be in the service. Hallelujah. God is good. Well, listen. We just started Malachi. And it's going to get gooder and gooder. Come on. Amen. It's going to get better and better. Amen. And I'm, I'm just looking forward to hear more what God's last words were to His people. And it's important to God. That's why He put it in the book. So if it's important to God, it's important to us. Come on. Amen. Friday, we're having an open outdoor movie. And uh, we're welcoming the community. We're welcoming all of you to come and be with us. And we want you to be with us. We're showing the movie Risen. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but it's a powerful movie uh, based on a Roman soldier. Uh, the last uh, days he had with the Lord. So it's going to be powerful. It's going to be outdoor. One of those big old silos is the screen. It's 100 by 100. No, but it's big. And so it's going to be great. That's this Friday, 730. We're going to have some refreshments. And then as soon as the sun sets... We'll show the video. Bring your own chair if you want to. We'll have chairs provided. And uh, we're praying the little mosquitoes leave. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So that's good. Also, uh, next weekend, next Saturday, to all the men, we're having our master's commission. And I just wanted to let y'all know that we are welcoming and inviting every man to be here at 9 a.m. We're going to have breakfast. And we're going to have Bibles. Amen. So God bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Have a wonderful, wonderful, God-filled day. Greet some people. It's mighty the bread. It's blood the wine. Pour out, pour out, oh, for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Rescue.